What's up YouTube? This is Print Practical. It's been about a month since my last video. My master's program and work have been taking up most of my free time, but over that time I've been putting my direct drive system to the test. So there was a comment on the design video stating that that direct drive system was going to fail, and it absolutely did. It took about three hours of printing, and things started to fall apart, and I had to go back to the drawing board. It took me about six revisions and now I have a solution that could be printed out of PLA that holds up over 100 hours and it's still printing strong. After 100 hours, this direct drive system is still printing strong. On the machine right now, we have the latest revision of the X carriage, which has survived over 100 hours of printing and there's no issues with it so far. And then we have a previous revision of the fan shroud. Um, I messed up when I redesigned this and the logo got all messed up. I fixed that in the current revision, but I knew that I'm going to be printing both the X carriage and the fan shroud again in this video to show how you prep them. So I just let it go for now. So let's go print out these two pieces. We'll break all the supports off and then I'll show you the difference between what is pictured here and the previous revisions. And then you should go try it for yourself. I just printed the current revision of the X carriage and the fan shroud, and I just wanted to show the orientation in which you should print these. Um, it's pretty easy to break off all these supports, but this is what I found is the best orientation. Getting the supports off the X carriage is definitely easier when you're not straddled around a camera, but that's all done. Let's just do the fan shroud real quick. All right, all good. So I don't have one of every, so I don't have one of every revision, but I believe that this was my first revision. This was the second. I believe this was like the fourth, and then this is the final revision. So let's just go over some of the failure points that happened along these revisions and then how we mitigated those. So this first one, I noticed that the X carriage kept getting wobbly. And if you can see that from the side, this tab here from the pressure of the wheel was getting bent. Can't get that to focus but it would just bend out and then the whole X carriage would wobble. So to mitigate that, I made the whole X carriage thicker. And as you can see, I still have that issue happening. And then also another issue I was having was that the screws would just strip out of the plastic for the hot end and for the fan shroud, which pretty much made the whole thing fall apart. So those were two giant fails. We move on to this one and we fully made this all connected here, um, along with sinking hardware into the holes so that there was metal threads in there. And this was a pretty solid one. I got about 30 or so hours out of this. And then as you can see, I actually had it warp a little bit and you can see a burn spot right here from the hot end. Um, and it did the same thing. It's hard to see, it's more slight on this revision but the whole bottom of the hot end or the the hot end heated up the whole bottom here of the carriage and it warped a little bit causing it to wobble some more and then this is the final revision i actually made these bump outs for the hot end a little taller to keep the hot end further away from this bottom piece here and i also added some additional bracing on the back to ensure that this is a really sturdy piece and hopefully we don't get any more warping so far. This has lasted over a hundred hours and everything has been solid. So not bad. This is the final revision. Um, let me show you how to prepare it. So the only thing you have to do to prepare this X carriage is you need to sink the hardware into the back. Um, as you can see, there are hex shaped extrusions in all four of these holes and it fits a m3 nut perfectly 
So there's two different ways you could do this. Um, I have a video that I made previously that shows how you can do it with a soldering iron. And now I'm gonna show you a way that you can sink these nuts just with like a butane lighter. Um, so we'll do that for these two nuts. Since these ones are a little deeper, they're a little more difficult and I'll probably do them off camera. Um, so let's do that now. So the holes on the front here are pretty tight for an M3 screw, so just wear them in a little bit, screw it in once or twice just to make sure that the screw goes through it fine. So I want to just give a quick warning, uh, don't try this if you're not comfortable with hot things. Um, here I have a pretty long screw, so I think I'm going to be able to hold on to it without it getting too hot. Um, but if not, you can use pliers to hold the screw. Um, just be very careful, and I'm not responsible for anything you do to yourself. So, we're going to use this butane lighter, give this nut a quick heat up, and sit that down, and sink it right in. And that is now sunk into the plastic. And now something you can do to make sure it's seated properly is you want to screw it in from the front. And usually I bottom it out. So that way it pulls it nice into its seat. You can use a smaller screw for this. But And voila, nice seated nut into the plastic. Let's do that one more time. There we go, and the second one is sank. So I'm gonna do the other two, and then I'll check back in. Well, that was a lot easier when I don't have the camera between my arms, and there we go. All the hardware sank, and this thing's ready to be put onto the printer. There it is in all its glory. The direct drive system that I just printed, put it on, and it's looking nice. So that's it for this one. I'm going to put the links for the files for the direct drive system in the description below, along with the Amazon link for both the extruder motor and the extruder that I have in my setup. If you have any comments about this, put them down below and subscribe. Thanks for watching.